Right, yes guys, welcome back to another video. We're starting to make this a bit more of a regular feature, but I've been seeing a lot of BS going on around the timeline, so I thought, cool, let me drop a video, let me discuss all of this, because there's a lot of people like to me, oh, you, you speak on Gallagher all the time, but you don't speak on Enzo Fernandez. You speak on your attack, but you don't speak on Enzo. You speak on Poch, but you don't speak on Enzo. Here you go, you frauds. I'm dropping an entire video discussing Enzo Fernandez and discussing what has gone wrong for Chelsea this season. So we can actually break down everything that has actually gone wrong for us, and then we can try and determine the biggest problems for us. And then we can determine whether it's Enzo Fernandez. Because, spoiler alert, it's not. It's not. People are massively over-criticising Enzo Fernandez because of our crap attack. And because he cost £105 million. And if you want to have the conversation of whether Enzo Fernandez is worth £105 million, whether they were over other areas of the squad that we should have prioritised about, fine. That's a different debate. But that's not the debate I'm seeing. The debate I'm seeing is John Joe Shelby can do what Enzo Fernandez does. Ridiculous takes like this. Enzo Fernandez should be passing better to the forwards, even though he's one of the best. Pro I think he's the best progressive passer in the league, and he's got the most success successful through balls in the league as well. But hey, what do I know? What do I know? So let's talk about Chelsea. Let's talk about Chelsea. So the season hasn't started well for us at all. We're sitting in 10th going into December with only four league wins, I think. Um, our defence has become a lot more open. We've conceded nine goals in our last in our last three games. Our attack, while they are better than they were last season, we have improved in our attack. They're still not at the level that we need them to be. They're still lacking that clinical edge that is strong enough to help us compete with the teams that are at the top of the table. Poch, I'll be so real with you, he's given me very little reason to believe he's the guy to take us forward. But I guess we'll see how the rest of the season pans out. But the number one guy that's getting discussed by rival fans is Enzo Fernandez. He seems to be the most criticised person. And I get it, it's the price tag. But it's also a bunch of idiots who don't watch Chelsea and who base their, their ratings of players on GNA. Or oh, Enzo doesn't get goals, Enzo doesn't get assists. He's a bag of crap. Cool. Let's talk about what's been going wrong at Chelsea. Let's see if we can pinpoint the exact reasons why we are where we are. I've, I've put a list of reasons. We can talk about them and then we can try and come to a conclusion at the end of it. First, finishing. And, and in fact, finishing and just final third play in general. Because sometimes, like the Newcastle game on Saturday, we are just fucking abysmal in the final third. Finishing has been pathetic in certain games like Aston Villa... Brentford, Tottenham, obviously, before Jackson finally figured out how to put the ball in the back of the net. Um, Nottingham Forest at times, Liverpool, Arsenal, to be honest, after the substitutions. Our final third play has been asking even more games than that. Like, just every game we didn't win. And even some games we did win. Like, Burnley, before the own goal, we didn't have a clue what to do. We have a massive, massive problem against low blocks. And sometimes when we're playing the better teams, we still seem to look disjointed like Newcastle on Wednesday. We get the ball into the final third and then as soon as we get into the final third, we shit the bed. Players will make the runs in the wrong positions, we'll be offside, we'll either miss the chance or we'll slow down the play like Sterling likes to do for God knows what reason. We seem to struggle against defensive blocks so much it's not even funny. And I think people have forgotten about that based on the run of games that we've just had and the teams that we've been facing. But even Wimbledon, League 2 Wimbledon, we struggled to break them down until we brought Enzo and Jackson on. And even then, we only scored because the goalkeeper went walkabouts for one of the goals and we got a penalty. That game, that game was a, a disgrace to this football club. Some of our play against low blocks have been a disgrace to this football club. Nottingham Forest, Brentford... Fucking, um, who else? Even Luton. Even Luton until the second half, we didn't look good. And we probably should have gotten a proven goal scorer in hindsight. I get it. But as much as I see that argument, I just don't really know who was there. Oshiman was unrealistic. You're not getting him at, the, at two years left. They're not letting him go. Let alone you even taking him unless you're putting 300 million on the table. Tony is banned. Vlahovic, the club just clearly didn't want him. I don't even think his numbers have been that great this season. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. But I haven't heard a lot of stuff on Enzo. 
Um, who else was there? Tony, obviously banned. And that's it. So there weren't really any any options for us anyway. What would you have wanted to do? Keep a Bamiyang. Mm. Uh, a lot of people didn't want that, but I'm not even going to sit here and be that shameless to say a Bamiyang would have been the answer to all of our problems. But it's partly an experience as well. There's a, it's a minor point. It's only a minor point. I don't want to delve on it too much because I've seen inexperienced teams do well. Sometimes it's based on all the other factors, but I do think inexperience plays when everything else is at fault because you don't know how to get out of that situation. Second, mentality. The mentality of the squad is in the fucking bin. I don't think I've seen a weaker mentality in the Chelsea team, and I'm even comparing that to last season's Chelsea. Man City is the only game where I think we had a strong mindset. Burnley, I'd say I, I, I credit Sterling's mindset over anything because he's the only one that did anything and he's the one that caused the own goal. That's, a, that's about it. That's about it. We, we seem to show a consistent habit of disappearing in games if we can't figure out how to break them down. I use, again, the low blocks as an example. Brentford, West Ham. It would get to points in the game where we would just give up and we would just pass the ball aimlessly around because we just don't know what to do. Sometimes we'll even be time-wasting against winless Bournemouth teams. I'm going to bring the famous protect the point quote that Pochettino came out with after we drew to a winless Bournemouth team. And he said that we had to protect the point against them. Playing defensively minded when in winning positions against the big six teams instead of killing them, like we did against Arsenal with the substitutions as well, like we did um, against Tottenham when we were 2-1 up. Thank God Cole Palmer just ignored all that shit and just started hoofing balls up top for Gallagher and Jackson to run on to. It was the only thing that saved us. Otherwise, we would have tried to hold for the 2-1 and we would have put pressure on ourselves and maybe conceded a second. But that leads nicely on into the third point. Poch. Poch has been a very big problem so far. Like, his decision-making consistently seems to baffle me. I've really tried to be patient with him, and I will still be patient with him, but... He's not doing anything to instill faith in me. Like, I've listed out a string of his crazy decisions that he's already made. West Ham away, Carney Chukwumeka off, Mudrick on, which killed the balance in our midfield. We've been playing Enzo in the 10 and Gallagher in the pivot for some reason in games, which made no sense. We have Thiago Silva being shoehorned into every team, where, whether it be low blocks, whether it be high lines, when he's consistently struggled playing in a high line this season and he looks at, at his best against the big teams when we play deeper. I don't get it. Protecting the point against Bournemouth, or bring that up again. Two forwards at home against Luton and against Nottingham Forest, struggling to break down fucking AFC Wimbledon. Gallagher right wing at Newcastle. We took off Mudrick against Aston Villa. We took off Jackson for a DM at 0-0, only to concede and then to bring on a striker at 1-0. Then Colwell at left back, Chilwell at left wing. We played De Sassi right back at Brentford and benched Gusto just because he made one mistake against Arsenal. The constant struggles against low blocks, again, couldn't even beat break down Wimbledon. The mentality worries me, friend, cancelling a day off against Newcastle only to go back on it and to give them the day off when they didn't deserve it after everybody stunk the pitch on Saturday. Blames nearly everything on the Nkuku injury. Said we didn't, Chelsea is a club that doesn't need patience and we need to win now and then ask for patience when we lost to Nottingham Forest. Like, he's already got three yellow cards as a manager and we wonder why our team doesn't keep their heads anymore. And why we concede 13 fouls a game. Like, Poch has been very, very worrying for us this season. And it's let's hope Nkuku is the game changer that he's pretending to be. But right now, I think we're putting a lot of pressure on his shoulders. And he has to hit the ground running. Otherwise, he's going to be the next one that's going to get over-criticised. Because Nkuku was meant to be the decision maker and all of that crap. So, back to the main topic of the video. How is it Enzo? How is it Enzo? That's what I want to know. Because we haven't spoken about the midfield. We haven't spoken about the midfield. On Enzo and Caicedo, there's been games where Enzo could have finished a chance that he had on a plate. And I'll give you that. Maybe his finishing technique could improve. Enzo Fernandez is not meant to be the guy finishing our chances, though. Enzo Fernandez is a controller. He is a dictator of play. And he does that job excellently. There's a reason why we have so many chances to miss. 
because Enzo Fernandez and Caicedo in the midfield are the ones helping push the ball forward into those positions. How is it their fault that our attack doesn't miss chances? How is it their fault that they are consistently put under pressure, under pressure, under pressure until the point that they break because our attack never takes them out of jail? How is it their fault? And that is literally my entire point. This whole Enzo Fernandez discourse is ridiculous and it's only based on GNA arguments and price tags. If you watch Chelsea games and you watch it without your agenda-filled goggles, you know that Enzo Fernandez is one of the last problems that we've had. Even in spite of the fact that there has been some games where he might have been a little bit underwhelming. Like Bournemouth, for example. Like Aston Villa, for example. There's been games where he's not been at his best. It's not been 10-10 Enzo all season. No, I'm not going to say that. But you man are going after the wrong people. Our attack is crap. Poch has just been very questionable. Defensively, we haven't looked the same as we have done last season. I think only really De Sassi can can look at this season with his head high in terms of all the centre backs and things. You know what? I've been I've been good this season. I've been good this season. His only bad game was West Ham and Brentford at right back. Why were we even having him at right back? I don't know, but yeah. There's been a lot of problems. The midfield is the last of my issues. Like, yeah, price tags might be a bit hefty and everything, but they've been good players for us this season. And it's just agenda merchants trying to talk and trying to deflect from their own midfielders. It is what it is. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything that I'm saying. Like, subscribe, and as always, up the chels. We'll be back at 8pm for Capital Conflict. Link will be in the description. Big up.